Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, you guys are so lucky. I stopped listening to Kendrick Lamar's new album so we can talk about <laughs> war games and full gear and all the shenanigans going up to one of the biggest PLEs of the WWE calendar. Plus, AEW went full gear in some of the most weird and ridiculous ways. And did I hear that correctly? There's another women's mid-card title. This is like the best Christmas ever, and it's not even Thanksgiving. It's Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 395, a dangerous alliance exclusively here on WrestleAttic Radio, and it starts right now. Like, seriously, we really need to break down what happened last Friday. Wicked came out, which almost knocked out K. <laughs> Gladiator 2 <laughs> came out, which I don't know if anybody actually showed up to that because of Wicked. We're going, we're going Kendrick to. dropped randomly midday on Friday, by the way, and took out most of the hip hop world. And Paul Heyman returned with CM, including me. And Paul Heyman returned with CM Punk. What a day in the history of pop culture. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King's Rings Podcast, episode number 395 of Dangerous Alliance. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us. We are here live currently right now on Facebook, on Twitch, and on YouTube. Thank you guys for joining us. If you like what you're seeing or if you're listening to us a couple of days later, please uh, like, share, subscribe, <clears throat> follow us on all of our social media, buy some of our fantastic merch. A link to all of that is in the description below. With me, as always, somebody who probably did not listen to Kendrick, did not, well, no, you saw Wicked. You probably didn't go see Gladiator yet, but Will Tarasak, how are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm one for three on those things, and it's the one you wouldn't suspect. I went and saw Wicked. Uh, that's what happens, that's what happens you have a girlfriend to drag you to things. But here's the funny thing, dude. My girlfriend has never seen Wizard of Oz, never what? read the what? book, never watched the show, but the Broadway show. So she's like, I really want to go see Wicked, but knew nothing about it. I mean, that's going to be God me. I'm going, thing. I'm Zero. going blind oh, I when I go that. see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? We, we went and saw Twisters um, back in <laughs> July or August, and one of the previews <laughs> in Twisters was Wicked. And she goes and turns to me and goes, I want to see that. And I go, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. It's like, like it's not so much that I dislike Wicked. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time with Wicked, but the same the thing I have to say about Wicked is, it's great cast, great acting, great costumes, great songs, great choreography, great set design, terrible story, just really bad writing. That's the one thing I just don't like about Wicked, but I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. So Kay Murphy, I'm gonna let you yell at me for not liking the story of Wicked, because I know you've already seen it twice. Yeah, seriously. Um, okay. So Wicked is one of my number one pieces of comfort. I'm the opposite of y'all. I've read the book at least 20 times. I read the book again before going to see the movie. I watched I've seen, it twice on Bro- I've seen it twice <clears throat> on Broadway. I watched a slime tutorial, which is a Broadway bootleg on YouTube of Wicked the day before I saw it. I, I watched The Wizard of Oz before seeing it. I came prepared. And it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And then Roman Reigns and CM Punk got together on the same day. So yeah, it's a I, great day to be me. I broke that news to Kay when it happened because I knew I couldn't hold it in. All right. I will read to you the text message conversation between <laughs> Kay and I when this news broke. Okay, hold on. I got to find words in all caps. I do send K a lot of, um, there it is. Okay. I do send K a lot of TikToks randomly. So I literally say, all right, so Friday, 9.57 PM, SmackDown is pretty much going off air. I said in all caps, CM Punk, Punk joins the OG bloodline for war games. K's response in five lines of text. Ah, ah, oh my fucking God. Oh my fucking God. Punk and Roman. <laughs> I said his hair looked really good too. Yeah, it did. I bet Punk's hair yeah. looks pretty good. And then I said Paul Heyman brought him back. K goes my dream. Sends me a picture of the, of Roman and Punk on the, on her t- on their TV screen and says Daddy fucking mania on the Wicked premiere day. <laughs> That's- K, it's like it's like it's like almost better when CM Punk first returned on your birthday. Seriously. <laughs> He's always giving me what I want. 
And I'm okay. Like, punk is <laughs> punk is always there right when you need him. To be. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> Except when I'm trying to meet him. That's facts. No That's facts. All right. Anytime I try to get tickets to a CM Punk meet and greet, it is not possible. Never going to happen. Oh, okay. I don't know if you probably know it's right, but I did not tell you this because you had already had enough excitement. There is a there is an official on WWE shop CM Punk. Oh, that ugly belt. ass belt. Oh, okay. I you already it. know about it. All right. All right. Never mind. Well, it's very ugly. It was during his time <laughs> in the 434 day reign. So, yes, it is going to be I'm, the ugly version I'm, of the belt. I'm very happy for him to be a belt, but it's It is oh. a Spinner Punk belt. And it's like seven hundred dollars. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that's a house that. purchase. <laughs> like once I have a house, that's when I start collecting the belts because I just have nowhere to put them now. So understandable. I want to get tag titles for the wedding. I'm just trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Which ones though? Yeah. Which ones? There's so many options. The NXT so, ones are great, <clears throat> by the way. My. J- my dream once upon a time was the NX UK ones, but obviously they don't make those. And are you obviously... sure about that? Because some of them are still might be on sale. On the shop, they don't. You, sell... might, you might have to go to eBay. Not on the shop because sh- this doesn't exist anymore. I don't want to, go to spend eBay. a million dollars. Okay. So TBD on what tag belts we end up getting, but I have wanted to do that for a long time. Nice, nice. Are you going to walk out as a tag team too? I feel like that would be like a good like entrance into the reception. Well, that's what I'm at. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, Yeah. like you got to figure out. You got to. I got to walk down the aisle. (laughs) (laughs) It's a new day. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Come out gyrating down the aisle. I feel like I mean the bar we're having the reception at like they host wrestling trivia every so often, so I feel like so they know. Yeah, they know. Where. They're they know they, they, have, they have they have they have songs in their spot. Honestly, I think they were more like when they were talking. They're like, "What kind of music do you guys like?" And I'm like, "Literally everything." Paramore. And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm also a musical theater kid." I think they're nervous about the musical theater part of it. Well, they've got time to figure it out. All right, so yeah, yeah play, play some that. wicked, play some wicked, Mamma Mia, and just go for it. Yeah. Hey, it's your wedding. It's, yeah. Oh yeah, you know, as, as long as you and Liv are in agreement, play whatever the fuck you yeah. want. All right, so yeah. like, just ideally, like ideally, no strings attached or anything. Okay, real quick before we get into the shebanga bang of this week, uh, what would be your ideal walkout song in wrestling theme? <clears throat> That's a great question. It's so funny. You answer say this that with the glass in your hand, just holding like that. Just answer it like that. It's awesome. Love the it's perfect. Love the visual. Yes, it's very, <laughs> it's very Meryl Streep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so funny you say this because my friend is a music teacher, and she asked her class what their walk up song would be. Um, does it have to be a wrestling song, or can it be like any song? I mean, any song. I mean, I would probably say ideally a wrestling song, but if it's it's, it's your walk up song. Um, hmm. is it China? Such a hard question. Is it China? No, actually. Oh. I don't know. I feel like my go-to for like wrestling like themes is always Jeff Hardy or like this fire uh, burns. I should have seen that coming. I did in school. We had to like core pick a song and choreograph a dance, and my friends and I picked Jeff Hardy's music. <laughs> is there a recording <laughs> of this somewhere? Uh I feel like on MySpace, like dead somewhere, but I don't know where. <laughs> Nothing's dead on the internet, Kay. Nothing is dead. We, where there's a will, there's a way. We can definitely find it. Well, same question to you. What is your walkout song? God, it's, uh, it's so hard because in wrestling, I'm either doing Sami Zayn or Glorious because those, 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 are two, those are two themes I have blasted in my car radio <laughs> for other people. <laughs> <clears throat> Like I, you don't hop in, you don't hop in like a, a 2013 Nissan Altima and play Undertaker's theme music. You could, like, just, no. <laughs> you could. I mean, not, but not, not with non wrestling fans there. You could, but like you could sneak in a Worlds Apart, Sami Zayn, or a Glorious into a mm-hmm. regular Spotify playlist and introduce it to your friends that have no idea. <laughs> so or, either one of those two, or I'd hire a really good DJ and have them combine the two, have them do like a, 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 kind of a mix mash and up, combine yeah. a mash a mashup. There you go. That's what I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah. I had, I had my buddy Christian from Cube Recording Studios like this mix mash mash these two songs up. <laughs> That's cool. All right, I guess I have to answer now too. I don't even know what yeah, mine would be. Yeah, what's yours? I do like Glorious a lot. It is so pompous. I do. It's so pompous. It's so pompous and it's so good. If I'm thinking like classic, like I'm like honestly, 
final boss rock is a great theme. Final Ooh. boss rock. Final is a boss great rock theme. is a great theme. I'm going to go with final. You know, you boss know, rock. you know why it works. It's like because now forever when the rock comes back. You're gonna be like, okay, which rock is yeah, it? Yeah, which one is it? And then you're like, <laughs> oh <laughs> shit, it's heel rock. <laughs> yeah, final boss rock. I think might be might be the walk I want. It's it's so it's just oh, it's so good. It's such a it's such a great it's, turn. Yeah, it's a great turn. <laughs> it's, it just it, it hits <laughs> right at the right time yeah. too, because he gets he gets to come out and be babyface rock, get spotlight. his pop, do the, do the whole. Yeah. Uh, goosebumps thing, yeah. and then fuck you, I'm a heel. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is excellent. I don't know, Ricky. For you, I'd feel like you would need a beat either produced by Dre, Kanye, or Nate. Well, we're not gonna do Kanye. Would be your beat we're not gonna Why do Kanye. Would we do Kanye and Nate. Because Kanye is because Kanye is a phenomenal. Say what you want. I don't know if Kanye is a dick, but say what you want about his, his music. His hooks, his music is just incredible. Producer Kanye is good. Shitty person. Yeah. Nate Dogg's dead, been dead for a while, so we can't use Nate. I know, but I, the <laughs> fucking guy, guy, the guy knows how to write a hook, all right? Like, I love, fucking love Nate Dogg. <laughs> Nate Dogg was hip-hop for a while. Uh, if you're going to add super producers in there, you got to have Pharrell in the Neptunes. I love N.E.R.D. in the Neptunes. Pharrell, Pharrell's also an incredible producer. Yeah. Can't read music. He's like the Nick Cannon of music, but. There's that. <laughs> I forget how to read music, dude. You gotta relearn. <laughs> I forget my I forget my scales. I just play trumpet. I forget my fucking scales. <laughs> yeah. So so maybe we'll do walkout music one day. Figure it out. But anyway, let's get into this past week in the world of pro wrestling. We're gonna start with full gear. By the way, I'll tell you right now, Will. You perfect score. No, I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, Stop you did. It. <laughs> I watched wow. it. You perfect scored. Kay and I both had two incorrect. I saw um, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his uh fucking Jungle Boy? I saw he lost. He as did. I got called it. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> he did. It, that was a pretty. That was a pretty whelming match. I will say this about Full Gear because I did just finish watching it today. Um, the middle of the card was excellent. Absolutely excellent. Um. Mercedes and Chris Statlander did a great match. Hangman and Jay White was really good. Kyle Fletcher and Will Ospreay was outstanding. I heard uh, that was match of the night. I don't know. Like I, I like they were good, and like they did tell a good story. For, for me, the match of the night is between Kyle Fletcher, uh, Will Ospreay, or Mercedes and Chris Statlander because they told a great story. <laughs> Mercedes actually bit her in the ring. It was kind of funny. Oh my god! I, I had a yeah. um, I I had, I had a friend and his son uh, were actually there. It was in a good Newark. crowd. He texted me. He texted me if I was gonna go. Yeah, so I, that's why I wanted to ask him like, how big was the crowd size? Like, how were the pops for X, Y, and Z? Yeah. And uh, I just texted him right now just for initial thoughts from him. And his son. His son is, I think, maybe nine or ten, maybe eleven at the oldest. Yeah. So and that'd be interesting. Like, right? Like, what does a little kid think of AEW? Because yeah. you know what you have to say about WWE. But like AEW, it's a completely different product. So yeah, I low key feel I mean, like a little kid would like AEW because it's like the big. It's violent. It's, it's violent. yeah, it's more violent. I feel like it's the yeah. big kid show compared to WWE a little bit. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. No, I, AEW. So, I could see AEW being super popular with it, like thirteen to sixteen. Yeah, yeah. that kid well, probably felt like such a badass. <laughs> yeah. He probably did. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm he nine did. at an AEW show. I was <laughs> a badass. He's chanting holy shit because mom's not around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's it's him and dad. Like, no, I can't wait to like be a parent and be like, okay, we're at wrestling. You can curse. <laughs> Have at it. Yeah, like, I, I'm cursing with you. Dude, I was thinking, I was, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, how old does my kid have to be before, like, he comes to WrestleMania with, like, the three of us? Didn't right? we have this? Didn't how we ask this question once? I feel like this is a topic of discussion we've had before. We probably did, but I'm sure my answer back then was really dumb. Because um, <laughs> now, like, yeah, I, I do think, like, I'd probably take a little kid to a house show. Because, yeah. like, if he has to get up and pee, who gives a shit? It's a house show. Yeah, yeah. Or if he wants to leave early, whatever. But, like, if I have a kid who's, like, 11, he goes to WrestleMania 40, and he gets bored and wants to leave before the main event, I'm going to be pissed. Oh, you mean, like, <laughs> those? You mean, like, the family next to us who left both nights before yeah. the main? Yeah, before the main event. It was okay. wild. Because they had a little kid, yeah. and they probably wanted to get him home. The kid I was, was probably like probably like ten or eleven yeah. too. I don't know. I was. I always had parents that like if they took us to something, it was with the expectation that like unless like there was like an emergency, we were staying. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. O- I think the only <laughs> yeah. time, 
I only left. The only event I ever left was like a Jets game. My dad chose to leave oh, well, in the last yeah, quarter. Yeah. I, I, but like, I can't blame. Well, can't blame that, him for that's that. That's totally one. understandable. <laughs> have you seen but, the Jets? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was really bad. But overall, Full Gear, I think, was a little bit better. Expect. I think I'm going to give it a solid 7.5. Um, the ending kind of weirded me out. Like, I don't get it. Like, okay, I don't know if you've been following, but Will, t- Will and I talked about this. We're doing a whole John Moxie and the Death Riders. There's no Blackpool Combat Club anymore, obviously. So John Moxie's, mm-hmm. like, taking over AEW. So now it's, like, this invading force versus Team AEW nonsense and for some reason the chaotic ed- v3 it's like the third time i've done the storyline yeah yeah, yeah was, this sounds really <laughs> so familiar this chaotic ending didn't really hit for me so obviously moxley won Arns cast yeah, put up a, yeah cast Arns put up a, as good of a fight as he can with his with his timu style like superman punch um <laughs> it is it is orange punch. I like yeah. it. I like it though. I'm not gonna lie. It's a better it name. Well. It's a better name. The orange punch is a better name of the orange punch. punch. Is Your orange punch is, is a is a great yeah. name, and he makes it look good. He does with, make it with look what good. he has. Yes, he does make it look good. But then you had all this chaos. So like a couple of people like came out that weren't even part of the PLE to help aid Orange Cassidy, and then as uh, the Death Riders were going away or trying to get into a car, a massive pickup truck came and like T boned their car, almost hitting all of them. And I'm like, what is going on? So they got into another car and fled at him. And you realize the person who came out of like the pickup truck or whatever, which totally fucked up the front of the pickup truck, was wearing a pink fur coat. And I was, oh, it's fucking Darby. (laughs) And I'm like, I don't, I, there's no sense of this. Christian Cage almost cashed in on Moxley at the end of the night. And that didn't happen because I was kind of a swerve. Oh, I forgot he had the money in the bank briefcase. Or, or whatever the called. contract is, yeah. Like, Hangman came out, and then Christian came out, and then Hangman gave Christian the contract. And then when Christian was thinking about cash again, Jay White came out and, like, did the, did his finisher on Christian, so that didn't happen. And then Marina Shafir was about to attack somebody, and then Willow Nightingale came out. Like, it was just a lot of, like, what is this all leading to? And I don't understand everything that's going on right now. And I've been watching for like the last month. So that sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is chaotic for a sense of being chaotic. And I don't know where any of this is going. Apparently it's leading to the continental classic tournament. You know, that belt that, um, that Okada doesn't defend. Oh, the intercontinental <laughs> oh, I title. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, I think, exactly. I think Okada, I think Okada just had his, just had a second kid. Oh, I mean, even then oh, he I, still wasn't defending. Him. Yeah, so I think he might be out being on paternity leave for a little bit. I, I don't know. I don't know. But that, if he has the belt, in that case, stri- did, did, did they strip him? Is that what happened? I, no, they haven't said anything. They're just going to have a select. Haven't said anything yeah. yet. Yeah, in, in that case, just strip him. Yeah, I mean, like the con- like go have your go have your kid, but hey, just leave the belt. Yeah, it's fine. And I believe also Ricochet and Takeshka was, I think, rather good. I skipped through because we didn't get a chance to predict it because that was a last minute addition. To uh, did Bobby get, did Bobby get a pop? Because I, I saw someone on the internet that Bobby actually did not get a pop like at all. Probably not at all. I'm saying, if, did you did you know it? Did you notice it on TV? Like, was it noticeable? Not really to me. Like, it was his entrance, was his entrance, but the match I think was good because he fucked up Swerve. Like he, oh, I bet. yeah, really? oh, oh yeah, it was good. Swerve, Swerve's gonna make that spear look really good. Yeah, no, it was good. He pretty much beat up Swerve to the point of exhaustion. So when he put him in, essentially the hurt lock, Swerve passed out. So it was a good, it was a good look for Bobby in his first match. Should have tapped him out. I think Swerve passing out, I think, is a good angle. It, it is, but I, I, I could be had this conversation before in wrestling, too. The, the, the tap out angle for baby faces happens too much. Yeah. Just tap. There's you no, there's the no, there's no shame. The pass out angle. Yeah, yeah. I say tapping out. I meant, I meant passing yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. The knocked unconscious angle from pain is, is overdone in wrestling mm-hmm. for the baby face. Heels tap out. Yeah. Baby faces pass out. Yeah. I mean, it's one like, of those things it, I think like it, it makes sense for, like, a John Cena where his whole gimmick is don't give up. Yeah. But, like, I don't think a babyface looks weak, quote-unquote, by tapping. It makes the heel look better. Yeah. I mean, I think it works but, now. But passing out works on certain circumstances. I think it works yeah. now because it was Bobby's first match. Yeah, it's a statement. Well, not Bobby's yeah. first match. It's his first marquee in match. In AEW. Yeah. Pay-per-view, yeah, right? Yeah, marquee match. First marquee match in AEW. So you're, you're establishing him as a formidable Person. Yeah, as a beast, as a tank. Yeah, as a tank, yeah. which he is. No one joined. No one joined Hurt Syndicate yet, but I think that is going to change very, very soon. But Full Gear, it's a good word. It's a good rewatch, especially in the middle. 
the 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 ends are you know the ends are the ends. It happens. Yeah, if, it, okay. if I was if I was gonna book a pass out angle, it's a, it's gonna be a squash. You're going in there, mm -hmm. you're tapping him out like like Taz back in the day. You're gonna drop kick him, you're gonna tap <laughs> him out, and you're gonna pass out in like 45 seconds. Yes. In and out, you're a beast. So we're giving you a right now. We're gonna move towards the update of the United States Women's Championship tournament. Oh god, mm. let me go to YouTube so I can see. Let me this bigger so I can actually fucking. Yeah, yeah. I can't read that. It's perfectly fine. It's my life. Yeah. There we go. I got yeah, it. Yeah. So we've got uh, Bailey obviously advanced last week. Chelsea Green advanced. Um, this past week, so the other side of the card, we have Naomi, Tiffy, and Alexa Lopez, Piper Meechan, and someone not named Jade Cargo, because Jade Cargill got taken out like Thanos threw her off of a cliff or the Soul Stone. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that was weird. Yeah, so Jade Cargill got roughed up in a weird way, which I thought was great storytelling, because Bianca left the match and gave Chelsea the win which I think is actually kind of flipping awesome. But the, the rumor mill has it that Jade is legit injured, so they wrote her off TV. Yeah. Um, which kind of might be a blessing in disguise. Who knows if she's really... She got laid out like Ronnie. He must messed up the Quan. Um, so if she is legit and she needs time off, this is a great time to do it, to be honest, because hopefully she's back by Rumble season and Mania season. That's the hope. You know, they listed her injuries as the most ridiculous bunch of injuries ever. <laughs> like <laughs> they said she had five. She was injuries. basically terminal. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I just, I need to see if I can find her injury list that WWE said because it was absolutely absurd what they said <laughs> she was injured with. Um, I I really have to because it was a lot. They're like, I hope they're like shattered elbow. Oh no, it was like five. It was like five major injuries in one. And I'm like, how does someone survive something like this? Um, it like it like looked like someone that's a hypochondriac <laughs> looking writing. at their symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was pretty rough. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Okay, it said so three days ago. WWE posted breaking: Jade Cargill has been diagnosed with the following injuries: deep lumbar paraspinal muscle contusions, bruised kidney, sprained MCL in her right knee, tibial plateau bone bruise of her right knee, facial and facial lacerations. No timetable for return. All right, do you think they wrote that list before or after she was laid out like this? After. Because, like, her right, her, right, her right leg is kind of bent, right, on, on the car? Yeah. So I'm like, did she just pose like this and then they wrote the list? Or did they write the list and they had the poses match? <laughs> I, I feel know. like they probably would have had to – I feel like it makes more sense to write the list after having her fall because you don't know how she's going to fall. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that, like, I'm trying to figure out – <clears throat> I feel like her real injury is in that list. And we don't. Oh, yeah. It's probably the knee. I think it's the MCL spray. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the MCL. Yeah, it's probably the knee. Yeah. That's really smart, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hide the real injury amongst the bullshit. Yeah. I think it's the MCL. Because that would make like, sense. We didn't see who attacked her, right? No, we she did was just not. That like is this. the mystery of who attacked Jade Cargo. I saw... I saw on threads that like somebody thinks that they saw Piper Niven like skulking around in the background. I didn't notice that. I see Piper but that's Niven. what I saw on the internet. So, so the big question is for Jade because there, there are two Jade mysteries now because Jade is also in Women's War Game, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But who replaces Jade Cargill in the U.S. title tournament? I have I one. Still, I hope they still Bianca. I have Bianca's already in. <laughs> Bianca, no, but she lost. Well, yeah, because she left the match. So you think she goes yeah, back to the her, other you, side? You, yeah, you could give her a second chance. Throw her back on the other side. Who cares? It's wrestling yeah. logic. I have I have a prediction, and no one's going to like it. And I think that's... Is it even Marie? Oh, no, no, no. That's your... That's that's <laughs> you. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> now that we, I love booking I her. I know you do. It's not Lash Legend. Oh, he Fred's thing's Lash Legend to grab, which is also possible, probable cause. But I think it is because she's been teasing it. And now that we know officially that the women's U.S. title tournament is literally all SmackDown contracted people, there is a SmackDown contracted person who has not shown up in a very, very long time that is bound for oh. a comeback that's going to piss everybody oh, off. God. And her name is Charlotte Flair. Uh, that would be that would mean I would not mind that, honestly. I think that's fine yeah. you're setting up that future feud. I mean, think of it this way. This is going to set up a major feud for her to come back as this massive baby face Absolutely. Against, a, against, a, against a new heel. So if so, Charlotte's the one that took her out, 
this makes the perfect sense in the world. I mean, yes, but, and Charlotte will play that role really, really well, Absolutely. but I think <clears throat> they're going to make you think it was Charlotte and then it's Bianca. Possibly. It's got to be Bianca because you got to think of it too, right? This is going to be a major feud. Who would you rather have that be with? Charlotte, who hasn't been around. She's coming back from injury, mm-hmm. right? And someone she has no chemistry with. And, and Jade Cargill, as of today, is still a little bit green. Or do you have to go up against Bianca, who she's been on the road with, in training with, and has way better chemistry with? It's chemistry the Charlotte together feud, as a tag the Charlotte, the Charlotte feud can wait, right? I think you need Bianca to kind of pretty much show what they've been working on for the past year. Mm-hmm. To make her look like a massive star. And once she's a star, you go after the bigger star in Charlotte Flair. Well, you're never gonna be bigger than you're you're never gonna be bigger than Charlotte Flair, but I think it's also believable that the one time on TV, because WWE is big on long term storytelling now, the one time they were on TV together, they had a really massive stare down and a pop, and you have enough time, especially if she recovers to kind of build it up. And Charlotte can hold herself on the mic, being like everybody, she can she can clear literally say on the mic one day if she does return. Everybody was so big on Jade Cargill being the next big thing, the prototype, the this uh, this once in a generation specimen. But I, it, like, it's me. I'm Charlotte Flair. There's only a one of me, and there's no one's going to be better than me. So you can run the Charlotte's jealousy angle. That's why yeah. she took out Jade. The, the shiny new toy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh, you forgot about but me. I, but- but I, I think that's a great storyline, but I think that works better when Jade is a more believable solo star. Okay. And, I, and it's like, okay, like we have faith as an audience, right? Have faith that Jade can now carry her own in this feud. Mm-hmm. This current Jade, I don't think has it, but after a big feud with Bianca and a good storyline along with Bianca mm-hmm. and maybe one or two other people, oh, definitely, right? Because you can even do that storyline when Jade builds herself up and eventually wins a title. Yeah, and that's really have Charlotte being jealous. Like, oh, you think you're hot shit? No, no, no. I'm still hot shit around here. Yeah. So your, your story works, but I think again, I think I can I can wait a little bit. It could also be Naomi. It's a great story. It could also be it Naomi be. too. It could be Naomi. Sure, they yeah. be friends and tag together. But you know, because who needs a heel turn more? Who needs a heel turn and a character change more? Bianca or Naomi? I don't know if Bianca actually needs it. I think she's too John Cena in her in her face run to have her switch she- right now. She is, and she's such a good face for the company. Yeah. And she does she so really much philanthropy. Is. And, you know, she, she's good for business as a baby face, but she's better for storytelling as a heel. Yeah, so, like, the, the mystery is going to be gonna be big about who takes her out. And I was, and hopefully, like, Jade recovers soon, and maybe she makes a return, like, post-Rumble and, you know, leads into a Mania run or something like that. Uh, but I, I hope they drag this out of, like, a whodunit, because I think it's going to be good for See, like, TV. I think, I think it would be, be completely wild, like, perfect scenario if I was booking this shit. Rumble, <clears throat> Jade comes back, number 30. First thing she does is straight to the ring, beeline, just knocks out Bianca immediately. And that kicks off the storyline, WrestleMania storyline. Unfortunately, yeah, the problem is, it, like, it wouldn't be Bianca's Bianca's in the match. So how could Bianca take Jade out? True. That's the only True. hole in the in the in the story. Well, also, you don't know you don't know how long she's been laying there either. That's very true. They just, they just, they, just, they found just found her. her. Yeah. That, it's not like they heard a commotion. Someone's running off. They they just. She could have been out there for three hours. Yeah. That'd be a great rib. <laughs> all right, Jay, just lay here. We're going to bring the cameras back soon, all right? Just lay Let here. Let us know if you need water. Let us know if you need water. <laughs> you know, what if it's Rikishi? I just love it being like Rikishi's always taking on somebody out with a car. It's always Rikishi. <laughs> yeah, it's always Rikishi. I did it for the rock. I was waiting for Rikishi to come out of the car instead of Darby. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. Just stone-faced. I did it. I did it for the rock. It's the wrong show, Rikishi. <laughs> Get out oh, of interesting. So, so my friend went to AEW. He said Osprey stole a show, which duh. Okay. Uh, Mox and Orange was eh. Yeah, yeah. And he said the he said the crowd was pretty good, but quiet during ricocheting Takeshita. Yeah, because we've seen it before. Takesh- interesting. It's the ca- you, you're right, Price. It's the Casca. I said Mercedes is best match in AEW so far. I agree. It was they told a really good story. She had a great storytelling match. They did really, really good. Um, Mercedes and Chris as the only female match on the uh, on the card too. So the Jade thing's gonna be a mystery for a while. One of our Jade mysteries for a while. The, and we now know, as of yesterday on Monday Night Raw, that the women in the U.S. Women's U.S. Title Tournament are all SmackDown people because Raw and Adam Pearce revealed 
the women's intercontinental championship, which I will probably probably call forever and ever the winter continental championship, because also it's a white strap and it kind of just sounds really nice. Yeah, no, that, no, that sounds way better. No, I love so that. Funny. I fuck it. I fucking love that. The winter continental champion, yeah. dude. Actually, they should have called it. It's like way better. It. Yeah. The Winter Continental Championship has been revealed. A tournament's going to start for that soon. Hopefully, it's not the exact same tournament that SmackDown's running for the women's U.S. title. Um, so, what are our thoughts on this? We, we pined for this for a very, very long time, and we got two. Mm-hmm. We got two. Naming aside, because we kind of bitched about the naming the last time. Kayfabe, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, so the women's intercontinental title is the title I've wanted the most yeah. for, like, ever. This is a good week to be me. <laughs> yeah. yes. It's great to be me. Um, it's a gorgeous title. I'm really excited that it seems like they might put women on TV more in a more meaningful way. Should we go back to three hours for both shows? You know what? It's, it, I'm gonna have to figure it out. We got we got a lot of support women. We got a lot of belts now, so we we gotta we got a lot of these belts need time, especially these two new women's mid card belts. That's the thing. If we're going to make both shows three hours, make it more worth it for me to stay up. Late. Understandable. 11 o'clock is late for me. <laughs> yeah. Will's going to figure that out, too, when he turns 30. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty much in bed by 11 at this point. It's hard. <clears throat> like, latest. I was a lifelong night owl. Now I'm like. No, I'm still a night struggling. owl. Yeah. I fall asleep I love around 1 o'clock. Time. I fall asleep around 1 o'clock and wake up around. 851. I wake up at 851 every morning. Nice. 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 That's great. I'm a little I'm up a little before that. So so well, what are your thoughts on this? We have we have two women's mid cards. I have nothing to bitch about in wrestling for a long time now. So I, I I feel the same way I did last week, except a little stronger. Um okay. like I'm 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 cautiously optimistic, right? Yeah. I mean this is this is this is very much an AEW move where they're just they're throwing in belts because people say they want belts. Mm-hmm. Now they need a they need a plan for these belts and it is this from no past past history doesn't mark future success, but it can be. Mm-hmm. And they haven't done so great with them tag belts. So I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, I'm just wrestling fans have had their heart broken too many times. So <laughs> fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not gonna get shamed again. Not happening. <laughs> so I'll give it a chance. Yeah, and the belt's beautiful. Yeah, I, I love the white straps. I love that theme of white straps for women. I think it just looks way better. It's a good way to condition um, your audience. Yeah, it's a good differentiator, and they they look really good carrying the belts. Yeah, they so, do. I, I, mean, I mean, we'll see. I'm not going to poo-poo on something before it happens. Yeah, so. I, I really hope, because so now, you, like, the tag team thing kind of gets lost in the sauce because it's tag team, so it's kind of, um, it's kind <laughs> of, uh, it, it's an interesting dynamic to to write for tag team stuff, especially with women, when, when they've never really been strong with multiple women's storylines in the first place. Yeah, um, exactly. So... But I think it's different when you're you're not writing essentially for four women at a time, especially with the dynamics two. of the writing room. It's only yeah. two women at a time. And hopefully, and then this is like, again, hopefully, you know, you have more people in the writer's room that can really work, that are solely focused on elevating both of these titles and creating stories for these titles. Like, it's going to be interesting and how they're going to I'm, I'm a little more... I'm a little more excited for Raw's too because I can think of things to cut on Raw. Yeah, Miz and Final Testament. Sorry, this Winter Continental Championship is a little bit cooler than you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Or Otis dancing along with whatever he was dancing on this week, or R Truth and Butch, or even American Alpha or Alpha American Academy. Or they there's call it? Alpha, Alpha Academy, Academy and American Made. Like, yeah, American Made, American Made. That's what they yes. are. Like that can be cut. There's things on the Raw roster that can be trimmed to make room for an actual attentive belt like this. Yeah. And I, I, I always say, if you can have a good storyline with a belt, do it over a funny storyline with side characters. Yeah. Definitely. So the question is, who yeah. is the first ever Winter Continental Champion? Uh, Raquel, easily. So you have Raquel and Liv hold both the women's yeah. belts. Yeah, you, you move that belt straight to the On top of event. Judgment Day, getting the, getting the men's tag belts, too. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And I think I think it'd also be smart to like just strip Bianca of the tag belts and then just never mention them again. That's the true. Tag what, belts. Dude, and just and just focus on these two belts. There's nothing you do with it. There's like it's kind of it kind of could work that yeah. way. It, it yeah, really just could. strip them in this or just... or you give them the NXT because it is a traveling belt. Or you give them the NXT. Oh. 
Yeah, or you can oh, NXT. Really say travel. Yeah, they go across all three brands. So you could give it to I have NXT a question. Talent. Yeah. Is Women's US also going to be a traveling title? No, they're going to be brand just specific. That's going to be Smack brand specific. Okay. Yeah. So, but then like uh, NXT has the Women's North American Championship. Correct. Yes. Oh, that's so right. So, are, there are literally a mid card title for all three brands of WWE, which all happened in the same year, which is kind of wild. To be honest yeah, with you. Maybe we'll get evolution too. <laughs> and honestly, I'm asking they you, too much now. you are. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they have the belts to do it now to make it something, to make it like a women centric PLE. Um, it's now about remember, remember, remember how they used to do Survivor Series brand versus brand? They have enough belts where they could do it like a, a Night of Champions tournament kind of a thing. Something like, like that. Champion I versus champion. That. Yeah. And the winner gets points, whatever the fuck they used to do with Survivor Series. Yeah, you can also. So, and also, like when they when they inevitably do another draft, now you can mix up all of these champions because none of them are brand specific title belts. Yeah, yeah you can swap them around. You can swap them yeah. around, which is always, which I think has always kind of been the plan. Uh, Raquel's a good choice. A lot of people are saying Dakota Kai, as long as she stays healthy. No, she can't that's, prove you can stay healthy. Yeah, first. as long as she can stay healthy. I'm really kind of, I'm really kind of like blanking on the on the Raw women's roster. To be completely honest with you, I'm literally uh, they got EO, right now. EO, EO uh, be a tough Chance one. and Caden Carter, Lyra Valkyria, Lyra Valkyria, Kiana James um, is injured. I know that. Um, I'm blanking on the Raw women's roster. I, I, I have. Am. Can I say something crazy? Not go, go, go crazy. What if Becky came back? Hold that thought. <laughs> yeah, Becky could come back too. Yeah, Becky could. Yeah, because we have a who's going to replace her. And because was, wasn't uh, Jade also in War Games? Jade is also as part of Bianca's team in War Games. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would I would so. say hold that thought. I'm looking up the current Raw roster right now if I can find them. Um, yeah, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a really hard time. <laughs> I mean, Charlotte, giving... Charlotte holding that belt too because she always wears blue. Charlotte's like the diamonds. Whatever I believe she's SmackDown no, specific. Thanks. I believe she's SmackDown specific. Uh, yeah, but when you're, when you're injured, you come back to whoever you want. Alba Fire and Isla <laughs> Dawn are technically the Raw. Um, you got <laughs> Dexter Lewis. Yeah. Ivy Nile. Uh, I was going to say Jackie Redmond, but she is an announcer. <laughs> she's an announcer. <laughs> yeah, see, the fact you guys can't remember the women on the Raw roster, even though you watch more than I do. I watch <laughs> There's Yeah, that's telling there, how this belt's how it, that's telling for how this belt is starting off. Well that means but that means there's room to grow. You also have Shayna, Sonya Sonya's a good Oh yeah, PFC, whatever they call Pure themselves. Fusion Collective. Shayna, Sonya, Zoe Stark. You also have Is Natalia on Raw or Smackdown? Natty is on Raw. Natty is a good starting point. She just won like two more Guinness Book of World Records too. She has like nine Guinness World Records. Mm -hmm. Um, Natty is a good jumping off point, to be completely honest with you. Like, you're never going to make Natty a world champion at this point in her career. Yeah. But you can yeah. have her, if she is, if Natty's legitimately the workhorse, which historically, by all metrics, she is the best workhorse of the women's the IC title. The IC title. titles, her title, have her have, go on a run and put over all these young women and kind of teach them the ropes of this is how you, you know, work. When's the last time she's been on TV? I want to say a couple weeks ago. Recently, Zelina Vega is Zelina Vega is also on Raw. Oh, on Raw, LWL. Yep. She's someone else I would like to see. Zelina as a too. Zelina as an IC champion actually might work. It's interesting. We, we, we got to see how big this tournament's going to be and who's in it. But it's a lot of good workers on Raw. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good workers on Raw. And I, I yeah, I, I still give it to her. I'd give it to Raquel. This is, <coughs> it's on it. It's on a prominent. A it's on. It's on a well, and having her as a champion in the most prominent group on yeah. Raw kind of does elevate her, and she's somebody that kind of needs elevation because she was out for so long for medical issues. Yeah, it elevates her, but it doesn't elevate the belt. Unless she goes after. Well, the big thing with Raquel, I think, is her best feuds were with Rhea, and they are. Yeah. Rhea's still going after Liv, and at some point they have yeah. to get Raquel and she Rhea. Needs to, she needs to pivot. Yeah. Yeah. Raquel and Rhea. There's something to pivot to. Yeah. yeah. Raquel and Rhea yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I hope they do that soon. But we will see. But congratulations. The winter con I kind of want to buy this version of the IC belt. <laughs> it's very on. pretty. It's it very looks pretty. it looks really nice. The blue and it's the white stunning. go well to go, go together. It looks more yeah, like it looks more like the Cody version of the belt that we had for a while. Yeah, <laughs> which I have. I have a copy of. I bought that when we went to Survivor Series. Um, 
five years ago at this point. Jesus Christ. Ah, I miss Chicago. Moving on. Speaking of Survivor Series, we have Survivor Series War Games coming uh, this Saturday. Remember the start time, kids. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. start time. It's emanating from Vancouver on the west side of Canada. Wait, is that is that is that the pre-show or the no? Main that's show? the show show. The main show starts at six. Yes. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The show show starts at six because I double checked too. I was like, that's pre-show, right? And like, no, that's show show. Um, I mean, it's pre-show starts at four. Four or five, yeah. Yeah, so it is It is a five-match card. Uh, obviously, they're doing a lot of store stuff. Uh, Chelsea Green's doing, like, a meet and greet and, like, brunch with Chelsea Green, which, honestly, I would go to brunch with I Chelsea Green. <laughs> Chelsea Green seems like an absolute riot. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> um, and, and all that stuff. So she's going to be busy uh, for, the time, for the time being, uh, but we're not going to be busy because Survivor Series War Games is going to have a really hard time topping last year because last year, which is, like, Last year, which Survivor Series was yesterday on the 25th, it's the one-year yeah. anniversary of the return of R-Truth. And that was the greatest thing of all time. <laughs> yeah, sure. We had R-Truth. We had, and the return of Randy we had the, the most massive-looking Randy Orton I've ever seen in my life. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, CM Punk returned as well, much to Kay's excitement, which I immediately called Kay after it happened. And I'm like, are you okay? Do we need to go to the hospital? <laughs> I did not need to go to the hospital, but I bought a shirt immediately. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember. Uh, I can't believe it's been a year already. It's been a year. I feel like so much has happened. It has. Did anybody watch the footage of Punk's Return that they released? I did. I actually. did. The behind the scenes that was all on YouTube. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, I Triple H just peeking through. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cute. I. It's just crazy seeing footage that WWE is releasing of like Triple H hugging CM Punk and everyone like hugging CM Punk and being excited about it's crazy. All except for Becky. Be- yeah, she has <laughs> I didn't notice that. I was like, oh, she doesn't like him like legit. And I feel like that's an acquired um an acquired hatred because of Seth. Mm-hmm. But, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but that was the one thing that really, st- really stuck out to me. I was like, cause like everybody's really happy. Even Bailey's like, oh fuck, I gotta get up there. Like Becky's such, Becky's like, uh, not Becky, my fault. Bailey is like us. Bailey. Bailey's like us. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude, Becky was just like, it's not so much that I hate you. It's hate that I always hear about, about you. you. From yeah. my husband. I hate that for the next four years, <laughs> I'm, all I'm going to hear is my fucking husband complaining about you. <laughs> that was the look on marriage. Becky's face. All right? <laughs> you have to hate who your spouse hates. I know. I know. The best part about just... it, too, I think they ended on the right way. Randy being Randy goes, I can't come back. I came back for 10, ten minutes. 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 <laughs> you couldn't give me that. <laughs> It was so funny. God, I, lo- I love older, wiser Randy. He's yeah, so really much funny. more fun. He's really funny. I was hoping we were going to see Drew Storm back, but I guess they cut that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. probably had a little temper tantrum. Ah, so good. So good. So moving on to this year's Survivor Series, uh, we have... The Battle of the Bloodlines, again, another Bloodline Civil War, if you may. You have Bloodline 2.0, Solo, Jacob Fatu, the, the most unserious, funny person in the world. Um, uh, Bronson Reed, excellent addition. Uh, Tama Tonga and Tongaloa, I bet you Tongaloa's gonna fuck something up. Versus the OG Bloodline, mm-hmm. Roman, Jimmy, J, Sammy Uso, who has another Sammy Uso shirt again. And I know, <laughs> and CM Punk led by a returning Paul Heyman and one of the most interesting returns ever. There's even backstage photos of Paul Heyman coming back that they released as well. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, it, it, it it's pretty interesting. And Paul Heyman looking mighty tan, like too tan. I know. I was like, geez, so tan, tan, Paul. Like, did they did they, did they think you were the turkey for Thanksgiving? Like, Christ. <laughs> They thought they thought Paul Heyman was gonna come back as the gobbledygooker. That's what yeah, it was. right. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. So 
we know there's a lot at stake here. It's the Battle of the Bloodline. This is only going to be like, what, the fifth inning of this goddamn story at this point? Um, mm -hmm. Who wins? Kay, are, are we going to get this out of the way quick, Kay? You're choosing Roman and Punk. I know you I, are. Yeah. <laughs> I can't not. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is my dream. And Sami Zayn, too? <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Next! I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like they I feel like well they have to OG Bloodline has to win. Right? Yeah. But how I noticed something I, interesting. Yeah. Paul Heyman and uh Solo Sokoa were wearing the same outfit. So I'm like nervous. I Yeah. Yeah. My 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 friend at Chipotle who works there. Shout out to Mike, by the way. He never listens to this, but he all we also had that same conversation during a pack line as he was making my burrito bowl today. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a red herring. I think it's a red herring as well. I hope so. I I think it is, but I I, I still think you have Roman Punk and Sammy all on the same team compared to comparatively next to people who are still trying to make their name. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Also, let me put it this way: they definitely like did the fact that Paul Heyman and Solo were the same thing on purpose. Absolutely. It's 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 people in the back's job literally to be like, you cannot wear the same thing unless you're in a fucking tag team. <laughs> like, <laughs> like literally, it's like it's this party. It's like no one can match. Uh, so, but I think if they they did it to throw out, throw off the internet, I think it's a red herring. Yeah. Because if Paul was gonna turn, how, how's he gonna get in the cage? God. What does he do? It's so, you know, so like I, th I think I Brock think, that's not happening. I think Paul. I think Paul could turn <laughs> eventually, mm -hmm. but I don't think he turns now, especially because Punk's in there. Like, why would he turn on Punk? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, which uh, which leads me to one of our to one of our first bonus questions for Survivor Series: Does CM Punk turn on Roman during Survivor Series? No, 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 no. I'm going with yes. There's no point. They're gonna fight at Rumble. I guess, but Punk Punk isn't there for Roman. He's there for Paul. Exactly, mm -hmm. and Paul's not there for Roman. Paul's there for Punk. Remember the lap before Paul Heyman got powerbombed in Madison Square Garden, which he will never let anybody forget that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the uh, this is this is his like Brock Lesnar beat the Undertaker street moment. Um, yeah. The last person that he looked to for help because Roman wasn't around. Because remember, Roman kind of abandoned him after WrestleMania. Roman left. Yeah. He went to Punk and was like, save me, save me. So there might be legitimate animosity between um Roman and Paul. And I think and I think that's I think that's the setup there. So in K Fabe. Mm-hmm. Why, like in your storylines, I think I think like, that does make sense. That's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. But why would Paul come back and bring Punk with him then? Because because he's Paul. Paul. He's like luring Roman into a false sense of security kind Paul of thing. Paul Heyman is notorious for screwing over people, whenever he wants to. <laughs> and if he feels that Roman betrayed him, he's gonna get his lick back, and using someone who technically never betrayed him, in CM Punk. God, it would be a bold move the one year after Punk comes back, he turns heel in the same place. That would be really rad. I want to, I'm ready for heel Punk, like, desperately ready. Like, I am so sick of this. I love him so much. Remember this. <laughs> love Daddy Mania. But I am so sick of this. I'm so happy to be here bullshit. I need yeah. you to be an asshole. Um, but I think him and Seth still have one more match. Okay, oh, that's so mania. That's like kind of like that's where I wanted to go with this. I don't think that Punk helping Roman has really shit to do with Roman. I think this is going to set more shit up with Seth because also obviously possible. they turn to Seth. Seth said no, and then they go to Seth's mortal Punk, enemy, Punk's CM Punk. Spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, CM Punk is encroaching on Seth's territory. Like Seth isn't on this card at all. No, Seth he's not. Could Seth could get involved in war games and take Punk out. I think he could definitely. He's not going to cost OG both time the match. Mm. But he's going to take think, Punk out of the equation. Yeah, he's yeah. going to make it hard for Punk. 
he, they're gonna get the, that going. Because there are rumors that punks, punks do, uh, not punk, Seth is due for a nice heel <laughs> turn, which I do think Seth could use a heel turn. Yeah. And punk's the perfect person to turn heel on. I, I think it's, I think, mm -hmm. I don't know, I think this match comes off clean without the Seth interference, but I think punk will use this to be like, the reason, he's gonna tell Seth, the reason you're not a star is because you're not willing to do the dirty work like I am. Yeah. And that'll, mm -hmm. that'll tick Seth off. And then, and then you're off to yeah. the races. You're you're clearly off to the races right there. Um, I think that's where it goes. Um, but I feel like someone's I still think punk might turn because there there is a there is a punk and Roman moment coming. If you kind of read their lips when the show went off air, if you saw the footage mm -hmm. of it, you know I don't remember what they said. Punk was like He's like he's like, What are you doing here? He goes, I hear I'm here for him. Yeah, but no, uh Punk also shot a little bit. He's like, This is gonna be fun. Oh, he okay. was like, she's going to be fun. And I, I wish, I need to find that photo for UK of them putting the ones in the air and Punk doing the go to sleep at the same time. Oh, I have <laughs> it. Oh, it's excellent. Yeah, it's great. You need to print that out like a professional photo and like just bring it everywhere with you Frame it. and just have it, like get it signed by all of them at some point. <laughs> Honestly, I would put that, I should put that in my office. You should. I don't have a lot of wrestling art in my office, but I'm like, I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you should do I that. I need that and the Kevin Owens Jericho uh, fingers. <laughs> yes, the one? creation of man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, thank you. The creation of man. That's what, that's what the spoof is. That's the spoof at its off of. <laughs> I know. I know. It was so funny. <laughs> Festival of Friendship Era is still one of my favorite oh, things in wrestling ever. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. work all around. So we're all going OG Bloodline clean sweep here. Mm -hmm. I know. I don't know, man. Oh, oh, we got okay. What do we? What do we yeah, I'm tell us more. I'm kind of stuck on this because before Punk got involved, um, the storyline kind of was like it's like the story kind of moved away from Bloodline Civil War. Like it's not really about that anymore. Like, it is, but it isn't. And there was also a lot of like the story of of, of Roman Reigns still trying to be the boss, but Jay's like, "Hey, man, we're all even." And Sammy's like, "Yeah, we're supposed to be all even." Mm -hmm. and you remember how last year? With the co I'm thinking also thinking of cohesive storytelling. Last year it was Sam, you had to prove himself to Jay and Roman. Yeah. Where it's this time Roman needs to prove himself to Sammy and Jay. So I could see Roman taking the bullet for Jay or Sammy and eating the pin for Solo to pick up the win. Ooh, okay. Interesting. I like that. I like where we're going <laughs> with that. Because, but with Punk involved now. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of out the window because the story isn't, it's no more about Bloodline versus Bloodline in Roman's power trip. Now it's about CM Punk. Yeah. Is, so how does that all fit in? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's that's the glory of this match though because there's three very valid options we each came up with, which we'd all think is very possible and we'd like to see. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a sign that I it's good booking. I can't wait for the the wild ass fourth option that they give us instead of anything. We <laughs> yeah, <You're> right. <laughs> like the boogeyman shows up or something like that. Like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Solo Solo's team gets the win. Yeah, that I mean, either way, this is main event thing. This is going to be a I mean, wild. Put it time. this way too: Solo Sokoa this year has pinned Cody Rhodes, has he pinned has. Roman Reigns. Yes. Like, he has had an unbelievable year and does not get the respect he deserves. And you have Bronson Reed, who did, like, a, th a three-peat with Seth Rollins, who's now they put him in the in the Bloodline 2.0, and he fits so perfectly with them. I He does, but he needs mm -hmm. to be a little bit more than the finisher. He's. I feel I like he's going sense. to have a stellar war games. Oh, uh, he's probably going to do the tsunami off the top rope, yeah. too. I mean, in the top, the top of the cage, let's be real. Like, him but and Jacob Fatu are going to go wild in that yeah match. <laughs> oh definitely uh, definitely yeah. so yeah it's gonna be fun it's i think he is a great addition yeah um is, i sort of liked 4v4 but i thought it was gonna be 4v4 it but adding punk fuck it let's do it you know it's gonna be a great hour we'll put it out it's gonna be a fantastic box office. Hour. Yeah, yeah it was it was great box office coming well, when this first happened when i first thought i was like "Ooh, this is an aew move <laughs> like they're going for the shock value and the names instead of the storyline mm -hmm. But now, as Ricky pretty much laid out f f 10 minutes ago, this is very much a storyline. Yeah, this is very much so, a storyline. It's multiple sto it's, storylines. It's storylines converging, and then they're going to branch off again. Yeah. So, yeah. I love yeah, it. See what happens. Moving on to Here Come the Women, because this is clearly a Here Come the Women War Games match that they just threw together for the sake yep. of throwing it together. Yeah. Yeah. They had it because they know they need it. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, uh, you have Liv, Naya, 
the two women's world champions, uh, Tiffy, the money in the bank uh, holder, Raquel, who needs something to do, and Candace, who also needs something to do, who's kind of been pairing <laughs> with with Tiffy and Nia. Actually, quite well. I kind of like the dynamic versus... It's weird, but it's good. It works, yeah. It mm-hmm. works really well. Um, you have Bianca, formerly Jay, not so more, not so much anymore. Uh, Rio, Io Sky, who is going to jump off the top of the War Games cage for like the um TV year in a row, and it's gonna be spectacular. Will and I saw it in person. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> With a trash can over her head, yes. too. That's <laughs> such a good moment. <laughs> and Naomi, who also kind of needs something to do. Uh, the big question here, who replaces Jade in in the in the face faction at this point? Besides who wins, we gotta figure out who replaces Jade. And I say it's Becky because I'm booking Charlotte to go for the U.S. Women's title. I think Becky comes back. I could see it. Yeah. Both teams have a mix of Raw and SmackDown talent, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, it really could be anybody. Yeah. Um, it's literally the most random Survivor Series lineup I've ever seen. For the right women's away. matchup, yeah. There's no storyline here. It's just they, they just all don't like each other. But they all deliver. Like the yeah. women's war games matches always deliver. Women's They're always so very good. Fun. Rhea Ripley, man, very like, like, good. Rhea Ripley, like was a monster in like the, when she was in NXT and they did war games. Yeah, yeah, they go for it. They because they they they're wrestling like they they're fighting like they know there's no story behind yeah. it. Yeah, Candice <laughs> Candice LeRae has always had good war games matches. Um yep. Bianca does what Bianca does in big matches. Uh, yep. EO, EO EO is Mrs. Rhea. War Games at this point. <laughs> no, literally, it's she's the War Games, you know, wrestler for sure. She's a general, yeah. So it's like there, there's a there's enough stars in here that this is going to be a fantastic opener, which I think this is going to be the opener as it should yeah. be. Yeah, um, yeah, of mm-hmm. course. It's just a matter of who wins and who does what, and also who replaces Jade. I say Becky at first, but Kay, who do you think? Um, Becky was my first choice too. But if not Becky, I'm trying to like think who's available. Bailey's not doing anything. Bailey is an option. They they made her an option on Raw because she came and helped uh, Bianca win the advantage match against Nia. I feel like it's gonna be Bailey. I feel like Bailey's the easiest. If it's not Becky, it's Bailey. Oh, then again, if it was Bailey, I feel like they would have announced it was Bailey. You still have SmackDown, but yeah, I feel like they would have announced it was True. Bailey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like they would have announced it already. So if you want, if you want to have a shock value, don't have someone you see on TV every week. That's what I'm going for. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily know if they're going for a shock value, though. I don't think they have to. It's Survivor Series. People are going to watch it. Yeah, I mean, it's also yeah, one of your too. big ones. Uh, you still want to pop it off on social you want, media. Like, Holy shit, Becky Lynch is If back. they're legitimately if they're, holding... a few hundred million views across social. Exactly. If they're literally <laughs> holding it back and they haven't announced it on Raw, that means it's somebody that we haven't seen in a while. So yeah. I'm going with Becky because mm-hmm. I don't think Charlotte's Charlotte's going to move a needle as Becky's going to do as a, as a special guest. Could be a debut, too. They could call it. Like, what if they called up um, <sighs> Who the fuck you... Roxanne Perez or something? I know she's a heel Oh, that right might now. be cool. It'd be cool, but I don't think she, 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 she's, she's still a heel. On NXT, yeah, maybe they had they had someone like that in NXT. I think they could do something like that. They could do something cool. I mean, it would um, be a giant leap because your biggest faces right now in NXT are Julia and Stephanie Vacare. Like, I think they can yeah. do it, but I don't. Is there anyone in the Indies who's available? I mean, they've been IDing people left and right. Like, they literally ID'd Kylie Ray, mm. which is a huge, oh, yeah, which right. is a huge get. I was like, oh wow. Uh, I don't think it would be Kylie Ray. No, or it's, anything, not smi- it's not Smiley Kylie. What about TNA? Like, what about Jordan Grace or something? Jordan Grace would work. Jordan Grace. Would Jordan work. Grace would work, especially because like you, you like she's that she's she, she's the body like she's the body type. She, yeah. Jade was the body type. Replace body with mm-hmm. body. Replace body with body. Jordan Grace would be an amazing. That would work. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And she and she's been on TV before, so the fans are they know who she, she showed is. up in rumble yeah. last year she's been on nxt they'll all recognize the time. her yeah, she, they'll recognize they're, she's her. hard to not recognize she also has an iconic <laughs> entrance because she has the sirens like uh scott steiner yeah 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 god imagine that the sirens they think it's braun breaker <laughs> <laughs> they changed his music again so. <laughs> of course they did motherfucker so what no it's still good but it's not like it's not sirens you don't hear enough of the barking um i like oh. jordan grace as a pick i'm still going with becky but are you going to go with jordan grace on this one will I'm gonna, go with, I'm gonna go with Becky. You're gonna go with Becky? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, but she apparently she was arguing she her her whole thing was money. She wanted more money, allegedly. I don't blame her. Um 
when when yeah. she first when she first left after WrestleMania, yeah. I think she wanted like five million a year or something. Mm-hmm. And W is just like, eh, well, yeah, well, yeah. Listen, she stayed in. <laughs> she stayed an extra month when Rhea got injured, so they owe her something. I mean, yeah, she. I mean, she deserves every penny. Yeah, she, give her what she wants. I mean, she's not gonna leave. So, yeah. if that if that got worked out, it could easily be Becky, or you know, she could still be sitting at home with her daughter. Chilling. So Fred's is reporting right now since SmackDown was taped because they're doing a lot of tapings during the holiday season, which is good for WWE. That a replacement was made, but Fred's forgot who it was, so he cannot tell us who it is. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna look it up. Don't look it up, Kay. Can I look it up? No, do yeah, not. look it up. Look it oh, up. Oh my god. Don't say who it is, though. I won't say who it is. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But if you want to know, just text me on the Yeah, side. text text it to me so I know to change my vote. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I won't say anything. Te- text, text, text is, it to me, I won't say anything. Is NXT though. being taped too? Because I looked up SmackDown spoilers. I'm seeing NXT spoilers. NXT is going on right now. Oh, it's Tuesday. It is Tuesday, Duh. yes. It's Tuesday, so you know what that means. Right. It's NXT. My it's- brain... I'm an Oz, guys. I don't give a fuck about this. <laughs> I know point. you are. I'm glad we got you for this episode here. Since we tried to... I debated. I'm, I'm like, do I call out and go see Wicked again? But I did not. That was a thought in my mind when I was getting ready for the show today. I was like, I think K might call out. <laughs> I really think. But moving on to this show... Who do we have here? Do we have the heels or do we have the faces? And honestly, I don't know. I know it's going to be entertaining as hell. Um, I also love all the memes of Rhea Ripley being Batman with the black with the black uh, face mask that she has because of her broken <laughs> orbital bone. <laughs> um, oh my goodness! I think due to infighting with the faces, the heels win. So the Liv, Nia, Tiffy, oh. Raquel—that's the one I'm going with. Yeah, they did announce it. Okay, I looked it up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go heels too. Yeah. Yeah. You got both champions over there. Yeah, they have to win. Yeah. Yeah. They have to. So he'll 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 uh full sweep here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Going heels. I I think that's the way it's got to go because I think it's more interesting that the baby faces that were randomly put together and have no idea what the hell to do <laughs> with each other. Yeah. I think it makes the best sense out of anything. Like it's still gonna be a fun match, and I just think they're 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 a little bit more cohesive on the other side. Um, big question here, because I'm going to ask this question at some point uh, until it happens. Do we get a Tiffy cash-in? Because what screams more chaos than Tiffany Stratton cashing in middle of war games? Because it's a possibility because there is a ref in that ring at all times. It'd be really funny. <laughs> you know, at this point, I feel like asking if Tiffy's going to cash in is like an inevitability in my life. <laughs> I feel like this has been going on for so long. Um, once again, I'm going to say, yeah, she's going to try again and not do well. <laughs> well, what about you? I'm going to say no. She is not successful in her cash in. I think that's like in. the point. Like they've been hype with. I noticed this when they when Money in the Bank rolled around that they kept saying that every woman that's cashed in has been successful. I truly think she's not going to succeed. Oh, to me, go down and hit just the first woman who doesn't succeed in their cash in. I mean, it kind of, it kind of feels that, like WWE kind of like forgets they have to book the <laughs> Money in the Bank briefcases every year. Here's also the thing. I know it's a very unpopular thing, but now she has more titles to cash in on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, it's that's true. also a possibility. Yeah. Like, she has. And being the being the first is, I think, good enough to ca- a reason to cash in on it. I agree. Mm-hmm. She's already in the U.S. title tournament. But, you know, she can always lose and cash in at another time. And cash yeah. in. She can lose the opening round or lose the semifinals and cash in during the finals and totally screw shit up. She could lose in the finals and then she cash in. win again, yeah. <laughs> and win. Yeah. Oh, that's that would be funny, actually. Yeah, so it's a lot of chaos that's going to come to Long Island in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, because it is a ha- the finals of the U.S. Women's Title Tournament is happening at Saturday night's main event. Uh, no idea what the mm-hmm. Winter Continental Title Championship is going to be. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go with the heels here. But uh, Tiffy, I don't think Tiffy's casting in yet. I feel like they built her up and they're making her such this like lovable, idiotic face next to Nia's heel so well but they're gonna want her to cash in although she's a lovable idiotic face so she can do an idiotic move that makes her lose the cash in so it can go either yeah. way 
That's the thing. I think she's going to try. I don't necessarily know if she's the cash in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I think she's going to attempt to cash in. I don't know if the cash in is going to go through. You know, like, Nia will catch her again or something. <laughs> that, is, that is a part of the lore of this of this Money in the Bank run, is Nia always catching her and giving her, like, the mom face. That's what I'm <laughs> meaning when I'm saying, like, I think she'll cash in. I think something like that's going to happen. Yeah. I, I get that. I get that. All right. Moving on past the War Games matches, we have Damian Priest versus Gunther 2 for the World Heavyweight title. And if we're being honest, Damian Priest has been whipping the shit out of Gunther for the last couple of weeks. And it has been glorious mm -hmm. in helping Damian Priest kind of build him back up again. However, Gunther's going to WrestleMania with this world title. And Gunther's going to find a way to win this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, that that's pretty easy. Honestly. Unanimous. Yeah. Gunther has had a fantastic run after losing the Sammy at Mania. In one of the biggest shocks in the agree. world. One of the biggest shocks of that weekend. Yeah, this man does, this never loses. Yeah. Most of his time in WWE, he's been a champion of something. He's a champion yeah, more often gross. than he is not a champion. Um, Would it benefit him to lose at some point? Yes, probably at Mania again, or he wins at Mania or something, but not right now. I love Damian Priest. I love what they're doing with him. This is going to be a fantastic match, I think. They, they were great at SummerSlam. I think they're going to do it again, but Gunther does win this. Clean sweep. From all of us across. Moving on to what might be absolutely chaos. Oh just chaos. Because remember, there are I can see this match being a triple threat and them using both rings. Because remember, war games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's gonna that's gonna happen. We're gonna, use both, <laughs> We're gonna use both rings. Triple threat for the men's intercontinental championship. Braun Breaker are now two-time champion versus Ludwig Kaiser because we gotta give him something to do. Versus Sheamus. Again, if Sheamus wins, he finally completes the Grand Slam. So that's the uh, love to see it. Yeah, but not gonna. Me happen. too. If we're gonna if we're gonna take Braun Breaker seriously, we can't keep hot potatoing his Intercontinental Championship runs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want Sheamus to win. I want Sheamus to win big, but a a triple threat is not the way he's gonna win. This is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a cr it's gonna be a crash. It's gonna be like a a freaking demolition derby. Because Ludwig's out of his mind. Braun Breaker literally ran into the ran into the announce table. Missing yeah, a spear. He's a psycho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a psycho. He's a psycho. <laughs> and Sheamus just likes to hit people. But I think Braun survives yeah. this because Ludwig and Sheamus just get on each other's nerves. So Braun all around. Sheamus just plays yeah. a game. How much can you fuck up my back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So Braun Breaker all around. Final match on the card because it's a five match card. Um, the. <laughs> L.A. Knight putting his U.S. title on the line against the Kylo Ren of WWE now, Sh uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> Dark Shinsuke, as I think we would like to call him. He looks like a Star Wars villain. He, he, does. he looks it's like really a cool. Star Wars villain um, coming coming out of this. I don't know if they've done enough to make this an interesting feud because Shinsuke just came back. Yeah, Shinsuke has no credibility. You know, they pump faked with him last time. So You know, um... However, it might be just me, but I'm kind of getting tired of LA Knight's championship run. It's kind of like rinse and repeat. I am tired of it. You know, it, it, I, and I think Shinsuke is a good foe for him, especially if he's being this brooding version of himself. Mm -hmm. Like to knock him down a bit. So I'm, I'm just going hard in booking and just boarding with the LA Knight US title run. I think Shinsuke. Have them have them run with this leading into Mania season. See what happens. So I'm gonna go Shinsuke. Will, what do you got? Eh, LA Knight. Yeah. I mean, Shinsuke has zero credibility. Like, so yeah. Like, even if he did win it, it's like, uh, who cares? Shinsuke, like, when's the last time Shinsuke and Nakamura has been relevant? I think he, well, he was out for a while. I think he was injured, but yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he's been. He's been like, but in the past few years, he hasn't really done anything injured or no mm -hmm. so you just bring him back and have him beat the guy you've been trying to build for the past 18 months well, he's already built so you got to give him something to do like he got like la Knight was great in the chase and he was doing really good in the chase and now it's one of those things like yeah. he got there and now you're kind of he's kind of fizzing out because you kind of got the same giver so you got to give him some sort of adversarial foe right okay so you take the belt off him mm. then what then what he could, well, 
<laughs> no, well, no, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Exactly. Like, but he's back in the chase. He's back in some some are good, but like, I think they, I think there needs to be a change of pace in the U.S. title scene because LA Knight's run through everybody. He beat he beat Carmelo Hayes. He beat everybody he in the SmackDown mid card. He doesn't have anyone any to work with. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to freshen it up. Uh, oh, so Nakamura was hurt Street. in Pro Wrestling Noah. That's why. And the, Nakamura was hurt and oh. had a couple of matches in Pro Wrestling Noah in the summer, then probably surfing because Nakamura does like to surf on his off time. Good for him. Good, yeah. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. What a life, right? <laughs> Is him on the wave? Ah! <laughs> I just picture like him like surfing to like his his theme music with the violinist. The violinist is on a surfboard behind. Right. Him. I hope yeah. that would be cool if they could bring that music back. Mr. Fretz also said that, or something similar. Oh, the shadows of the rising sun. Yeah. Yes. It'd be good. It'd be good. I'm I'm interested to see what what this happens here, but I I think I think to freshen up that that U.S. title scene, you're gonna need to do something. I think LA Knight. I think LA Knight's run his course, and you got to give somebody else to roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. Did you pick? Did you go Shinsuke or LA Knight? No, I'm going Shinsuke as well because I too am very bored of LA Knight. Yeah. Right now, and I don't know. I think it would be good for Shinsuke to win the title on his return. United States of Nakamura returns. Back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but like Wills keeps it, kept saying like how irrelevant he's been. Why not make him relevant now? I kind of want Shinsuke to win because by the time Rumble rolls around, Logan Paul will come back. And I just kind of want to see Shinsuke kick Logan Paul's face in. Ooh. <laughs> now he's gonna fight Mike Tyson first. <laughs> oh God! To, to, to a... Could you imagine Logan Paul and Mike Tyson at WrestleMania? Dude, Ariel Hawani was trying to egg it on. He's like, "So, look, Mike, you gonna fight Logan?" Apparently, uh, Logan thoughts. Apparently, WWE <laughs> is interested in a potential thing like that. Please stop. It's Vegas. Anything no. is possible in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Anything is. It is possible in Vegas, uh, but we'll see what happens. Again, folks, Survivor Series emanating from Vancouver, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Well, remember, the pre-show does not start at 6. Yeah. <laughs> the pre-show does not start. If you show up if you show up at like 8, thinking the show starts at 8, you will have a bad time. Yeah, because you can't play it from the beginning until it's <laughs> until over. Until it's over, yep. There's no replay. Fuck, dude, yeah. that's why Peacock sucks, dude. What WWE Network, you, WWE Network you, you were late. You get to start from the beginning as it was live. Also, I miss the speaking network. of the network. <laughs> R.A.P. As of January 1st, 2025, the WWE Network will officially be no more worldwide. As everything will that's port so f- over to Netflix. 12 years. Yeah. Fucking sad. Yep. So R.I.P. the WWE Network. If you still have it, enjoy it for the next month, uh, month in like ten days or so, because it'll be officially over. Um, January first, twenty twenty five. So R.I.P. to the greatest streaming service of all time, and I will not be taking any arguments against that. Correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything about it was just the best. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect in every way. Like whatever you think about it, your favorite streaming service, you got. I wish they had WWE had, had it. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wish they had a live stream where they just show stuff like a regular television channel. Yeah, WWE did that. They had it. <laughs> it was just random. Yeah, it was great. It was perfect. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I used to have the network on in the background of my room at all times, just for whatever random thing was going on that day. It was good background fodder, but. No more. It perfect. is great background TV. Yeah. But no more. But anyway, back to Survivor Series. Uh, how well do we think this PLE is going to be? I have high hopes for this one. I really do. I'm going to go I'm gonna go 8.5. It's a one-match card, baby. Yeah, I'm kind of up there with you. I'm going to go 8. Yeah. Okay, Fabe? I'll go with an 8 as well. It'll be good. Yeah, it's going to be good. It, it might be a surprise. It might not be, but <laughs> those war game matches are going to be fucking brutal. Absolutely. Yeah. That's about that's two hours right there. Because remember, each war games match is about an hour each. Yeah, thirty. I think it's thirty five to forty five minutes, including entrances. Mm-hmm. And then every five minutes, someone else gets brought in or something like that. Yeah. In the yeah. cages, times that. Fretz is going nine. It's going Fretz, big. I see you. It's gonna be. Here's the thing. It's gonna be hard to beat Survivor. Big four. It's a big four, but it's gonna be hard to beat how good Survivor Series ended last year. Something yeah. big has to happen this year for at the top last year. Because that's what it's going against. 
Is this our last pay per view of the year? Um, yes. Yes. For, besides main event. Besides they Saturday's, Saturday's main, main event. event yes. In December. So the ne- after this, we have Saturday's main event. We have NXT Deadline. We have AEW World's End. So it's like three more. Okay. Yeah, three more. And if we if we wanted to have fun and do like Wrestle Kingdom, which we probably won't, we can also do that as well. Nope. Depending if we're even depending if we're doing a show during the the, the uh, chaos of the holiday season. Oh God, we need to figure out the holiday. Yeah, we we'll figure that out at some point. Uh, but at this point, I think I think that's it. Any final words, anybody? Okay, when's the next time you're gonna go see Wicked? Great question. <laughs> um. <laughs> I might have to just snag you. Be like, hey. Come with me. To come with me to explain what's going on. <laughs> I really think you would love it. I'm looking for. I have days off, it's, so it is a fantastical film. I have to look at my schedule because between Thanksgiving and now that December's approaching, my December's already booking so fast, yeah. and I like don't understand what's happening. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> are we doing outro? We're about to do outro. We I just want to ask you about the wicked stuff. Any final yeah. words, Will, before we get out of here? Um, potato. Perfect. All right, let's get let's get to it. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number three hundred and ninety-five. A dangerous alliance because it's going to be pretty dangerous. In that war games cage, I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me on Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B I G Z, Ambassador Biggs, find Kings of the Rings podcast at K O T R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us some great reviews. The links to all of that are in the description below. If you are listening to us, make sure you're listening to us on Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast, and follow Wrestle Addict Radio socials at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter. We might have to switch soon, and at Wrestle Addict Radio, all one word everywhere else survivor series war games is coming up this weekend it's sure to be a great time maybe i'll be on discord maybe i won't be we'll see what happens we'll tear shock dude i'm so pumped for the holidays i love thanksgiving yeah. so that's gonna be fun i hope everyone out there has a great thanksgiving i'm thankful for you ricky i'm definitely thankful for you okay and as well as everyone in our discord mm-hmm. uh our discord server is a lot of fun we do get um, silly from time most- to time it's really fun we get so silly, especially with Mr. French dropping in. Fuck it. I all didn't of know this I was server. And all the Simpsons memes. I'm the only one who likes them. I'm the only one who gets them. That's okay, Fretz. I know they're for me. Okay, <laughs> Murphy. Wow. I can't believe it's Thanksgiving. I'm also thankful for all of y'all. Um, yeah, I'm ready to eat. Hell yeah. You can find me on threads instagram and tiktok at k-a-e underscore f-a-b-e yeah i yeah. i do like that friends happy yanksgiving i might have to call that now yanksgiving it's a good it'll be yanksgiving when we sign when we sign juan soto but until yeah once hal <laughs> steinman decides to yanks give his wallet away <laughs> Anywho, folks, enjoy uh, enjoy Thanksgiving if you guys celebrate it. Enjoy Yanksgiving uh, when that happens in a couple of weeks. Don't enjoy anything from the Jets because Kayfabe knows all about that. But also Stop. enjoy War Games this weekend, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, folks, goodbye. Good night. We'll see you soon. And someone we're not thankful for, maybe because we haven't had him on a show in a long time, is Slack because fuck you, Slack. We'll see you next week, folks. Maybe. Close enough. <laughs> This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.